hello and thanks for coming in. Thanks for your interest. I'm going to talk about the download redirector that OpenSUSE employs. And uh, even though this is a generic project or generic, uh, generically useful piece of code, which could be employed by other projects too, I'm talking about it uh, with some open source context because uh, that's where we use it. And uh, I hope it's uh, nevertheless understandable for you. If I talk too much about open source specific terms, then uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me. To introduce myself, um, I have been working with SUSE for eight years now, working on the download infrastructure and also on the build service. And uh, in the past, I have been a lot of uh, have, do, have been doing a lot of Apache maintenance, so I'm always a bit into web stuff. So what do we serve by OpenSUSE? We have lots of lots of project, uh, products products like uh, the release distributions, 10.1, 10.2, 10 10.3. Then there are unstable snapshots, several architectures. Then there are sources, bug infos, test trees, other test trees, and then the build service since recently, which adds a lot to that. So that's all. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? But uh, this is really much. Altogether, we find uh, 700,000 files right now in the OpenSUSE tree. And uh, just to start all those files takes a long time, so, as you can guess. And uh, the size adds up to a total of yeah, nearly a terabyte. Meanwhile, and uh, we also have lots of download requests to that stuff. So, well. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? The problem is, there is no single big fat pipe which can handle that. Nobody has uh, such an internet connectivity. And uh, there also isn't a mirror which can uh, handle that much stuff. I have a quote here of a mirror which uh, basically says, uh, oh, that's, uh, isn't that a bit uh, heavyweight? Debian and uh, Ubuntu is just. 200 gigabytes. So uh, naturally, um, the commonly used solution to that problem is uh, employing a content delivery network. There are lots of them, and they can handle that, but they are that expensive. It's not really a question for us because uh, we can maybe afford that for one or two days in a year. So it's not a solution for us. So we will need some kind of poor man's CDN. This is basically what we're trying to build. Luckily, mirrors come to help. Um, thinking about mirrors, it's uh, interesting to know that they don't cooperate us uh, with us in uh, any way that we can control them, have, have control over them, because they just mirror us for their own benefit. Some making a business with it, some also want to help us, and they simply mirror us if we want it or not. We have no, not much influence. What we can do is we can facilitate mirroring for them, which is in our interest. In the past, the mirrors used to be equal, and they used to be equally useful, because uh, they were either mirroring us or not, and um, so if the mirror was mirroring us, you could, and fast enough for you, close enough to you, then uh, you can could simply use it and stick to it, and just do everything over the mirror. But today they are really different, because uh, they don't mirror the complete trees. And for users, um, it has become impractical to just pick one mirror and then stick with it. So with uh, all this, uh, yeah, all these trees that we um, offer, of that size, there's virtually no mirror that can mirror that completely. 
so there are no complete mirrors. Most mirror only some parts. Or mirrors can also be outdated. They can maybe they don't have caught up and mirror or already used um, released products. So what we see is partial mirror. <coughs> And uh, really only few sites will uh, actually mirror a terabyte of stuff. It's actually even hard to find anyone to, uh, just for mirroring the build services, which are 200 gigabytes. Not even the largest source mirror, source watch mirror um, has capacity for that at the moment. I mean, they have lots of capacity, but they don't have enough free capacity right now to add this to their mix. So, we see partial mirrors. And if that uh, wasn't enough, our content also um, has an extremely high turnover rate because um, it's not a tree that's released uh, three times a year. Because uh, yeah, we have a build service and security updates and they are released basically uh, all the time. Could be every few minutes that uh, packages are uh, new packages um, turn up. So that's actually faster than it can be uh, synchronized, in fact. Because uh, during the sync, it's already famous. So a mirror is more some kind of uh, unsharp picture. So we have no up to date mirrors in reality by definition. So what we have are partial mirrors. So what can we do with them? Ah, another, before the answer, another thing um, which makes it even more complicated is that um, with, a, with an open source binary package that we offer for download, those packages are referenced in metadata. And this metadata contains checksums and cryptograph cryptographical signatures. So if there's something wrong or packages come from wrong version from some mirror, then um, the client will trip over it. So back to the question, what can we do? One thing would be maintaining mirror lists and uh, trying to keep them up to date, but that's uh, extremely hard to maintain. They are too static and they are never ever correct. So, um, mirror lists would work to some extent for human users because if a human user downloads some ISO images, then that's maybe two or five files. Um, then it's possible that he, it's possible for the for the user or feasible for him um, to try two or three mirrors and then find out which one works for him. But it's still annoying. The mirrors are out of date, which they are. And uh, this trial and error process leads to, leads to, or can lead to some effect which uh, can be called SourceForge effect, because that's what happened to SourceForge a few years ago. People will, in the process of finding the, the suitable mirror, they will um, all find, they will all end up with one mirror and trying to use the same mirror because that's the one that has given them the, less, uh, the least headache. So at SourceForge, every user after some years went to the Irish mirror, so problem for them. But uh, it will will make mirrors overused, so they're not really good then anymore. So there is one solution, which is highly dynamically um, generated mirrors. So they virtually need to create it in real time and uh, even though we can't uh, execute any control on the mirrors, we can watch them carefully and see what's there. So that's what we are doing. Um, so we redirect clients to mirrors. That's what the, what the redirector is about. And, uh, in order to be able to do that, we need to know what the mirrors have. So what we need is an inventory of files, a kind of file list of each mirror, which we need to keep up to date, which we do by uh, scanning them and um, 
Then we need to periodically uh, probe the mirrors if they are online at all and alive. And uh, with that in place, we can redirect the clients, HTTP requests the clients do, to mirrors. And this is something that works with every standard HTTP client, so it doesn't involve any special, um, specialized client. And while we're doing that, we have the opportunity to locate the client, see where it's uh, located in which part of the world, by way of its IP address. And we can load balance the requests based on mirrors capabilities. So we can have the read mirrors and send them less requests if we know those mirrors. <coughs> we also have the opportunity to um, do sensible to, or to allow, to enable sensible caching of content because uh, caching is always important because it frees the lines and um, saves bandwidth and uh, but we need to exactly uh, set con cache control headers for that but that, we can do that because it uh, works with our we, we do it on our own the requests go through our infrastructure we can also decide to, live, to deliver certain files uh, directly instead of redirecting so that gives another level of control. And uh, that's why we actually use only HTTP, not FTP, because FTP is a bit too stupid and can't, uh, you have no way of uh, cache control. Web caches cache um, arbitrarily, like 6 to 24 hours. Roughly. So the inventory that we need is obtained by scanning mirrors, which we do by Arsene mainly, or fall back to slow because Arsene is not available. The inventory is kept in a database, and there is an interesting um, characteristic of this inventory. Um, when we zip out stuff, new stuff to servers, then old stuff becomes obsolete and files are deleted on the mirror. In the database, in the inventory, the stuff will only disappear with the next scan when we do the next scan of the mirror. But um, this is not a problem for us because uh, the files disappear first on the master itself. So once they are gone there, then uh, we don't, we don't uh, need to redirect for them or deliver them. So there's uh, actually no need to look up in the inventory. It will be cleaned up later, but uh, it doesn't matter. The whole idea was, to my knowledge, um, first implemented and uh, thought out by Christoph Thiel, actually presented here two years ago. Uh, it didn't scale very long, because uh, first it was only used, used for some parts of the distribution, but when we tried to use it for more parts, then it wasn't scalable enough. It was redesigned uh, a year ago, and rewritten as an Apache module in C, which is called Mod Zilka Glow. And there are some similar frameworks which uh, have similar approach, approaches which uh, also inspire the design. So if you wonder about the name, which uh, nobody can pronounce, memorize, and so on, um, I came to the name because uh, during the time I thought about this stuff, uh, I, I visited Slovakia, and I went to a concert in this location, which is called Club Zazirkadom. And uh, later I, lear I learned that uh, this means behind the mirror. So it seemed like some kind of maybe possible name. So how does it work? I'll give you some step through here. The redirector first looks if the file can or should be redirected at all. Then it um, cleans up the file name because uh, usually there are lots of symlinks in the trees, so um, you will end up with lots of double files in the database. So we can utilize the file name and just ignore the links. Then uh, the redirector looks up country and continent of the client. Then it looks up possible mirrors 
for that time and somehow sort them by uh, distance. Then it also uh, makes note of um, previously previously used mirrors by that time. So it uh, memorizes the kind of association between previously used mirror. And um, after the local mirror and or the mirror from the country and the preferred mirror, um, it will next uh, look at the mirrors from the same region and then at the rest of the world. So it's source them. And after that, uh, from the best available mirrors, um, it chooses one by random. Well, this random choice is also influenced by some kind of value that we define for each mirror, which um, gives them greater or lesser um, chance to be picked. Then, uh, since we find a way, we will redirect. Or, it may serve the file directly if no mirror was found. So this um, regime has lots of advantages. Those redir redirects are very cheap, so it's probably scalable. Um, it is very integratable to web services because it's trans transparent. It um, gives you control uh, when, to when to redirect and when not. So this is um, maximum control that you can have or want to have about how the stuff is served. It proved to be very scalable. Uh, during last year, when we released the last product, we had um, no problems at all. So it was so, it was so solid that I could actually go into vacation and no phone rang. <laughs> Other advantages are that um, the centralized approach gives us the opportunity to count downloads. And um, it's also possible to integrate a real content delivery network, some kind of a wildcard mirror, which is always added into the mix, which we also did with the, the, the 10.3 release. And um, then there's something special, we can serve live mirror lists instead of redirecting. So that's the kind of uh, real-time mirror lists I talked about. So a client can actually get a list of mirrors and then figure out by itself which is the fastest or... Hmm. So all this makes small and partial mirrors useful for us. So in fact the time that we need large mirrors, powerful mirrors are actually nearly over because um, we won't find a lot of mirrors that mirror the large, the, the extremely huge trees that we offer. So what we actually need, what, what, what we can have is lots of mirrors which are not loaded with one terabyte but only maybe 60 gigabyte is enough. So um, if we could just mirror the most popular 10% of content then we are fine we can have more mirrors and everybody's happy. And uh, one of the best advantages of the thing is that it's not open source specific. So it can be used with other download services. Disadvantages are that mirrors die without warning. Mirrors break all the time. It's just, just natural. And uh, the reliability of the, the, the entire framework is only as good as the parts. So what we do is uh, we monitor the mirrors as closely as possible. And uh, if one mirror fails, then we disable it automatically in the database and stop redirecting to it and check back later. But there's a certain time window between we, uh, we, the yeah, time we detect the failure and uh, actually disable the mirror because we can't check it all the time. And so uh, there's also always um, weird failures which are very hard to detect or find out, like firewall problems that you only can find out about after two or three weeks of debugging and with things that sometimes uh, don't work but they work most of the time. And uh, here's some interesting potential for the OpenSUSE download client because it could make use of the mirror lists and actually fall back to other mirrors. 
it's uh, also um, important to know that with, uh, with this kind of infrastructure, um, every request runs through the central server. So this server needs to be up. And so it needs to be a uh, uh, high, ability, high availability setup with uh, proper load balancing and backup servers. And um, you can spread out several of the digital redirectors. That's not the problem. It's mostly, at least for us, more problem of the budget because we still have only a single machine for that. But I hope that will change in the future. So it's not a design problem of the redirector, it's just a budget problem of the hardware that we have. Um, but other than uh, throwing hardware at it, for us, it's also possible to enhance the client and make it use previously used mirror URLs. So this is my call to the open user. zip folks. I hope we can uh, implement that in the future. Downtimes, in general, are often acceptable for human users if they don't occur too frequently, but they are often very bad for machines because software acts up and users don't want to deal with sort of uh, error messages. So we can, I think, we really should uh, make sure that the client has our specialized client has uh, special support for dealing with, uh, with failures and um, yeah, falling back to mirrors. Let's step through a bit quickly here because I actually already met with that and I want to save some time. Um, I could expand on um, a number of optimizations that we did uh, during the process of setting this up. Um, so it involves some database optimization it's crucial that it's uh, scalable enough and uh, other optimizations are that we try to deal um, or try to respect uh, certain mirror um, needs or special needs for remote regions like New Zealand that have special internet connectivity. So we um, have some special support for this for the things. To give you some numbers, um, download open to the org, which um, served the our last product release in the autumn last year, um, peaked by um, 13 gigabytes per second, delivered content to clients, and that was only um, the, the, client, uh, the, the content that we redirected to the content delivery network. And uh, what we really like to mirror is not really counted here. And as you see, we have um, several million requests each day. Um, I'll probably not discuss the other approaches to detail now because time is running out. Um, there are some other things like Squid. It would work well, but it requires uh, Squid which won't happen probably. Real content delivery networks work by adding intelligence to standard DNS. We have the static mirror lists, they are not longer feasible. There's a similar module like module but that requires interaction with the mirrors. <coughs> the Mozilla project has a so-called bouncer, which is basically a similar approach. And the Fedora approach is also very similar, and uh, with the difference that they have uh, logic on the client and on the server side. So that works together. We really like it so far. So, <coughs> what we have with the current setup are that our trees are too big, and uh, we need to think about um, splitting them up more, and uh, at least offer more fine-grained, well-thought-out housing modules for the mirrors to mirror from, like the 10% most popular stuff I mentioned. And we need to make sure that we just don't just put more stuff into the trees and it's blindly mirrored and just fills that disk. We need to improve our infrastructure. I mentioned it already. We need to do better monitoring 
and better failure detection. And we have still some old infrastructure left, left like um, the mirror lists that were maintained in the old CCDP, which were pretty static and edited by people. They are not synced with this new system really. There are certain ideas which I will skip now. We can talk about it if you're interested. Um, thank you for listening. Any questions? time. How do you currently determine if the mirror is dead? Or how, what is your criteria for declaring it's dead? Um, we check value every three minutes with the HTTP request on the base URL. Okay. So we would like to improve on this by checking real files and um, like random file downloads, things like that. And we need to expand on uh, checking for large file capabilities and things like that. So there's a lot of potential. Um, did I get it correctly that you also have some algorithms in place that do kind of load balancing that you don't always redirect to one potential mirror and this yes, one gets flooded yes, because yes. of the next partner? Yes, so that's a weighted randomization that, that we do. And we give the, the mirrors the weight individually. And um, so by that we can make sure that a small mirror only gets very few requests, but it's still useful. And um, a small mirror might get more requests than for files that only hit this mirror has. So this can play together. We also have, um, related to that, we also have a way of making sure that a mirror in, say, Israel only gets requests from Israel. <coughs> or a mirror in Australia is a preferred mirror for clients in New Zealand. Right. So because they mostly go to Australia. So it's not uh, helpful to them to move them around. That's knowledge that you have to enter manually. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's uh, hardly possible to obtain automatically. It would some some things might be possible to um, find out by client feedback, client would uh, give us feedback about mirrors that work well for him. So there's also potential. Yes. Maybe just think as ping times, or if you do trace route from the client, how many hops, and yeah. feed this back to the master. That's difficult because we don't know the kind of connection. Yeah. Are there any plans for third party uh, repositories like Pacman or something? Good question. I think I haven't thought about it. We can uh, talk about that to the build service folks. Um, it might be problematic because of files that uh, we may not allow, uh, be allowed to leave to work for other stuff. But right now, um, the implementation expects the files to be there locally. So. It, uh, that, that helps us a lot for determining um, if the file is if, if it's useful to redirect it, if it's uh, fresh, if it can be cached, and stuff like that. So it might be difficult. But okay. Basically, with Pacman, people could set up their own data return. Definitely. Yeah. Otherwise, Peter is, of course, also at the booth. If you have any questions, just come to the booth and discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.